brothers and sisters today is a wonderful day that we celebrate Easter together before that I'd like to remind us that our God is a faithful God he is so faithful from the very beginning until today you can see it, I can see it, you can experience it. That this God, our God, my God, and your God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, He is so faithful. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years that people follow this Lord. This Lord God, they can see it with their own eyes. People all over the world, they can see, they can testify. Among all of those churches, I want to pick one church in the Israel area called Macedonian Church. It's Macedonian. Talking about these people, they're experiencing the love of Christ and they share what they receive from the Lord. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 5, talking about the generosity of the Macedonian church. At that time, they got no pandemic and stuff like that. Like now, like today. They collect the money from their, from their Macedonian people and send the money out to have the church in Jerusalem. And we see that here in Cambodia and Phnom Penh. You did that. I'm going to read the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to 5. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joys and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. They need help. They're poor. They don't have too much. But the scripture said they are overflowing joys and extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity they are generous even though they are poor Paul said for I testify that they gave as much as as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us in giving, in giving tithe to the house of God. With the world pandemic, I know it must be hard for some of you 
Some of you might be struggle. I believe with all of my heart that the Lord does not need our money. But the Lord wants to see where is our heart. Whether we trust God, even though we don't have it. Whether we trust God, even though we're in poverty. Whether we trust God, even though the world economy, the economy around us is difficult. It's hard. I know maybe some of us is hard. You need to pay for your rent, utilities and everything like that. But you trust in the Lord God that He can provide. Starting with our heart. First, trusting in Him. You are so faithful my brothers and sisters. New Life Fellowship, we get to have this place, run this big building. You are contributed. You have contributed toward this house. And we build so many churches across the nation of Cambodia. As you give, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord God, my brothers and sisters, is so faithful in giving. Lord, as they give this week, Lord God, Lord God, I ask that you will protect their heart, protect their seat, that the evil one have no right to sight tight the seat. Let the seat grow, become a tree and a big tree and produce more fruit. That fruit will protect them, will protect their family, will protect their relative, will protect their village, will protect their community, will protect their businesses, will protect their income. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may give. You may give. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome to English service. I hope every one of you are doing well. As you know, this Sunday is an Easter Sunday. I want to remind us, God himself was born into this world. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14, And the word became flesh and dwell among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word of God became flesh. The Word of God became a person. The Word of God became a person and dwelling and living among us. Jesus was living among us. Jesus going around from places to places, villages to villages, city to city. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23, and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news, gospel of the kingdom, and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Among the people, demonstrating and revealing that he was indeed the promised Messiah. Jesus is going around many places, and teaching and preaching. And this Jesus, later on, he died. He died for us, and he saved us from our sin. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5 to 6, for there is 
one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Jesus is the God of heaven, came to this earth and died for my sin and for your sin and the sin of this world as the ransom to pay for the sin and the result of the sin. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 3 to 5, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and was esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carry our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wound, we are healed. Jesus bore grief, sorrow. And pain for us. He was crushed for our sin. He heals our diseases. This is Jesus. And then Jesus have risen from the dead. Death couldn't hold Jesus down. In the book of Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 to 7. But the angel Say to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Mary went to look for Jesus at the tomb. But angels appear himself, you come to look for Jesus that was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Come and see it. Jesus was not there. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen. Jesus rising from the dead. From the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you, Jesus is gone. Death couldn't hold him down. Jesus is risen from the dead because Jesus is gone. Because he's rise, risen, we can face tomorrow. We can face the thing that we cannot see yet. We can face fear. We can face diseases. We can face sicknesses. We can face all circumstances in front of us. This one time, it happened to this one family, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. This family has three people, and this family is dear to Jesus. Jesus loved them. But this one day, the brother is sick. So the sister wrote a letter to Jesus in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 3. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom 
you love is ill. The person that you love is ill. The person that you love is sick. The person that you love is in need. The person that you love is in trouble now. So come quickly and help him. If you read the story, you see, after Jesus received the news, Jesus do not come quickly according, according to what the lady wants. No. He got something else to do. And later on in verse 25 to 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, Jesus said, I am. He is the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, believe in him, believe in Jesus, though he died, even though the person died yet, shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asked the lady whom the brothers was sick and died. I, I, let me ask you, do you believe this word of Jesus as well? Do you believe this word of Jesus that Jesus can help you? Do you believe this word of Jesus that Jesus can heal your diseases? Do you believe this word of Jesus that this word of Jesus can help you? Help you with everything. Do you believe it? And going on. Then go into the book of John, chapter 11, verse 38 to 34. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave. And a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an order. For he has been dead for four days. Meaning like, Lord, by this time it's really stinky. By this time it's rotten. By this time it's over. By this time it's too late. You don't come on time. There is no late for Jesus. Jesus can fix it all. Jesus can fix it. Verse 40. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Lady, remember, I told you, if you were to believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I say this on account of the people standing around. And they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cries out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out. His hand and feet bought with linen strips, and his face wrapped with the clothes. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Jesus went around and healed all the sick people, cast out demons, and raised the dead. You know, Jesus still do this today. Jesus can help you today. Because Jesus is alive. There is a hope for you. There is hope for me. 
we have a new chapter of hope for us. Even though we are living in the midst of the world pandemic, COVID-19, it's okay. Jesus is alive. He is ready to help you and I anytime you need his help. I would like to encourage us to not discourage when you are facing all of these issues in life. You might facing that your finance is not good. It's not good at all. You might think your finance is too late for God to help you, but it's not too late for God to help you. Maybe you are facing with diseases, with sicknesses for many, many, many years. You feel like there's no way out. I cannot get out of this. I'm not going to be healed. I'm not going to get better. Maybe I'm going to die soon. Maybe you feel like, oh no, COVID here, COVID there. Now it's closer to my home. I might get COVID as well. You might feel like that. But let me ask you, Jesus can help you. Jesus will give you wisdom to deal with all kind of bad circumstances in your life. Just believe. Only believe. Only trust God. Only trust Jesus. You will see the glory of God. You will see your bondage. We get set free. Jesus will call that bad circumstances out and release you and let you go. And people start to see you. People start to see the glory of God. How come this person got set free? How come this person come alive? How come, how come? Because of the Lord God, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, anything you're facing is not too great. It's not too difficult for Jesus to help you. He can help you with all bad circumstances. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, you are the Father of all. Because Jesus is risen from the dead. We have hope, Lord God. We have hope in him, for he is living among us, helping us because he said he will not leave us as often. He will be with us to the end of the age. Lord God, I don't know what kind of circumstances that my brothers and sisters are facing. Lord God, you know them all. You can see them all, Lord God. Lord God, I invite you to come, to intervene into these circumstances, Lord God, and stop the work of the evil one and plant the seed of hope in my brothers and sisters' heart and let the seed of hope grow, become a big tree that every one of them can see the glory of God. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, I like to take us to this one act of remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. We call Holy Communion. As you see, we got the bread and we got the juice here. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, 
Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Take, eat, this is my body. Eat the body of Christ. You become like what you eat. You eat the body of Christ. Remind us of that the body of Christ break into pieces for us. And when he had taken a cup and give thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it. All of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sin. I'd like every one of you to bring the bread and the juice and to thank God for what he has done for us. We want to remind ourselves without Christ paying on the cross, we cannot live. We cannot have relationship with God anymore. Let's take the bread and the juice. Father, Lord, thank you so much for that cross that you paid for our sin. We don't have to pay for it ourselves, Father. Lord God, help us to remind ourselves to be grateful toward you always, Lord God. Lord God, I live my brothers and sisters. I live their life, their body into their hand, uh, your hand, Lord God, and protect them from the evil one. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.